What's going on guys, WhiteFox1225 here with another video, and today we're doing our Elder Scrolls Online Saturday, and we're doing a review of the new Orsinium DLC for ESO, so DLC came out about a week and a half ago, I've been playing it pretty much non-stop, finally got some time to sit down and do my full review, and I absolutely love the DLC so much, I think it's definitely the best update to come to the Elder Scrolls Online, and I think it's honestly, you know, the best zone that we've had in the game so far. So it is a PvE zone, so first off let me just go into the questing, so the story in the DLC is absolutely incredible. You know, it's not really straightforward, uh, there's not like a clear, you know, good versus evil like we've seen in some of the zones. It's a lot more interesting than that, and it's a lot more of like a human conflict, if you get what I mean. There's no monsters, it's not like fighting the worm cult or anything like that. It's two sides of people versus each other, and it gets kind of political, and like I said, you have to pick sides, and it gets tough sometimes. So, a really great story. Now, moving on to the next thing I want to talk about, there are lots of choices in this DLC, so... We had choices in the Elder Scrolls Online, but they didn't show up that much. This has so much more moral choices. So there's so many times where I just stared at my screen for like 10 minutes because I didn't know what I wanted to do. And some of the choices aren't obvious. They're not always like choose this or choose this. Sometimes you just have to do stuff and what you do is going to affect the outcome of the story. Kind of like a game more like Skyrim where it didn't lay out the options for you. You were free to do, you know, whatever you wanted. Now another thing with the choice is that sometimes in conversations there are just more than one way to say things. Uh, so that's something I've wanted for a while. You know that's something we see in Skyrim where there's more, uh, you know, a lot of dialogue options. But we didn't see that in ESO, especially at launch. It was only like you could only ask questions. You couldn't just say different stuff. So in this DLC, there's more than one way to say a lot of stuff, which I really like, and that's something I've been asking for since launch. So I'm really glad they put that in the DLC. Now next going on for the questing, I think it's really awesome that now you actually have to find the quest. So there's still a little marker above someone's head when they have a quest to give you, but it no longer shows up on the compass. So it's a lot harder to find. It takes a lot more exploration. So a lot of times I found myself just running around the world instead of just following my compass. And you know, that's what the Elder Scrolls is all about. You know, I was actually running around trying to find adventure, which is a really cool thing, especially in an Elder Scrolls game. A really good example is that I was in this museum in Orsinium, and someone gave me a list of relics to find, and it didn't show up as quest markers, I just had to look at the description of where they were, go ahead and find them, and bring them back for rewards. So that's a really cool thing that we haven't seen in the Elder Scrolls Online before, and that's something that would appear more like in Skyrim, so they definitely made the questing more free, more open, and I definitely like that a lot. It just feels more like an Elder Scrolls game. Now, just before I move on, let me say that the zone is absolutely beautiful, an amazing place to explore. I love Skyrim's sort of uh, layout. Now, this isn't in Skyrim, but it is a close, especially in the landscape. So it was really beautiful. You know, they always do a great job with the zones. They're massive, the scale is huge, and there's so many scenes where you just stop and, you know, take some screenshots because it's so beautiful. So they did a really great job designing the zone, and I said it before in my first impression video, but the fact that they brought in all new architecture, all new music, really makes the zone feel like it's, you know, its own zone, and not something that they just threw together with, you know, textures and stuff they already had. So, great job to Zoss on the zone and the questing. So moving on to the gameplay, you know, the gameplay is pretty much standard, it's still in Elder Scrolls Online, you know, it's not, the game hasn't changed, but there are some new gameplay, uh, you know, aspects that are really cool. So for example, I was doing this quest up on a mountain, and I was going to the summit of this mountain, so I was really high up, and there was these avalanches on the mountain, so they were basically AoEs that I had to avoid. But they made the quest a lot more fun. If you got hit by one, you started losing health, and it just made the quest and, you know, that trek up the mountain a lot more exciting. Now another example is that enemies sometimes do new attacks. I saw this new attack where someone launched like a bunch of little AoE circles that you had to avoid. I haven't seen that before so I think they added that which is really cool that they just added new attacks for NPCs and AI. I thought that was a really great feature. You know some of the, I won't go, I won't say who because it's a little bit of a spoiler. But some of the enemies would just like jump in the air and like land on you. That was just really awesome. And again, we haven't seen that before. So they added a lot of new gameplay stuff that I really like. You know, it's still the Elder Scrolls Online. So if you like the Elder Scrolls Online, you're going to like the gameplay. But just having enemies do new attacks, having some new environmental hazards, it just made things like a little more interesting and shook things up a little bit. Especially when you've been playing a game for like 500 hours, like I've played ESO. You get used to the attacks and you get kind of bored, so when they change things up, it's definitely exciting. And again, great job to Zoss with the gameplay. 
Moving on, let's talk about the world bosses quick. So there are world bosses just like in every other ESO zone. So these ones are a little harder. They're designed a lot more like dungeon bosses. You can tell they definitely took more time with these. They're not just like thrown together standard bosses. They're really unique and they all have like special attacks. And like I said, you're going to need a group for these. You used to be able to solo world bosses, but you can definitely not solo these. Trust me guys, I tried and I got absolutely destroyed. So you're going to need a group to take these guys on, but they're really powerful. And if you guys can picture just like a boss in a dungeon, it's basically what these are. So the world bosses got revamped for the better and they're really more challenging and more fun now. So again, great job with the world bosses. Let's move on to the public dungeons. So there are two public dungeons in the DLC. Uh, so a public dungeon is basically like a delve, except it's massive. Uh, the public dungeons are absolutely huge. Old Orsinium is definitely like the size of a regular dungeon. The only difference is the bosses are a little less hard. Uh, but the public dungeons, I think, in the vanilla game were a little bit of a mess. They designed these a lot better, and, you know, you just kind of can flow through it naturally without getting confused like the old ones. The bosses are all placed really well, and, yeah, I had a really fun time grouping up and taking down some monsters in Old Orsinium, which you guys can see in the uh, gameplay. Uh, that's me with some friends just playing, or actually just some people I met. Uh, so a great job with the public dungeons. You can also grind these areas to get drops for the motifs for the new armor. So if you want to grind, these are great places to do so. Uh, but also if you like dungeons, I think you should like these. It's a little less challenging, but still give you a little bit of that dungeon experience, even though there isn't an official like four-man dungeon in the DLC. Now moving on to a couple things I didn't like about the DLC. First off, the new armor, I have yet to see that many people wearing it, and it's because the grind to get it is so hard. I wish you could just, you know, either get the armor in the crown store or find it throughout the world. Probably the second option, because I just really don't want to have to grind for 50 hours in order to get the armor or pay like 20,000 coins or, no, not even that. It's probably more like 100,000 coins or something like that to get a full set. It's absolutely ridiculous. And I really wish you could just find the armor because, again, like a 50-hour grind to find it is not really that much fun for me. So I really wish they would just, you know, put in the game throughout the world. Uh, also, I still don't like the animation on the bear mount. I thought I was going to get used to it. I still think it's a little weird. Uh, you know, again, these are all kind of nitpicky things, but the bear mount does kind of bother me, the animation. So I hope they fix it a little bit. Uh, other than that, guys, I think that the long loading screens are a little bit of a problem, uh, but, you know, not too much they can do about it, but some of them can be, like, three minutes at the max, so hopefully they can shorten those up a little bit, and, you know, the last thing, Orsinium does have a little bit of lag, the actual city can be a little laggy, I know, it's, you know, they can't really f completely fix that, but I know they are working on the lag all the time, uh, so again, those are all nitpicky things, but I wish they would improve them just a little bit, uh, but, you know, overall, the DLC is absolutely amazing. And in the grand scheme of things, those are really small, nitpicky, uh, you know, little mistakes they made. Uh, but overall, guys, the DLC is really well designed and, you know, really innovative. And like I said, the best ESO zone and my favorite update. I think it's probably one of the better game releases of the year, honestly. And I would give it a 5 out of 5. I absolutely love the DLC, as you guys can probably tell. But overall, it's just a better version of of Elder Scrolls Online and I'm really excited for the future updates. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about the Maelstrom Arena in a future video and I'm also going to be talking about more Arsinium stuff so tune in next weekend guys for uh, some information on some new upcoming zones and we got some information on the Thieves Guild and Dark Brotherhood which is always fun. So make sure you guys tune in next week for the Elder Scrolls Online Saturday. If you liked the video make sure you guys go ahead and give it a like. If you want to see more make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll put a link to my Instagram and Twitter in the description below in case you guys want to check that out as well as a link to my first impression video for Orsidium. Uh, as always guys thank you so much for watching the channel you know couldn't continue without you guys. So thanks for watching and continued support. Um, I'll see you in the next one, guys.